Hi everyone and welcome to the first instalment of my Lydia Millen home series. Obviously after the success of my Instagram account which I started just before Christmas and we are almost at 100k already which is like two months on it's great two and a half months on it's just absolutely mental I never expected it to be such a thing and I've obviously been waiting to bring you some of my room tours which we recently obviously finished seven rooms in the house we still have work ongoing our cloakroom is currently being done we've just had someone come and measure the floor for the hallway and we've also got our staircases being done really really soon so there's still stuff ongoing and there's still loads of rooms that we haven't touched yet so there's lots more to come but we have finished some rooms and I wanted to bring you the first of my room tours my proper room tours I'm going to be showing you inside everything in each of these rooms so cupboards drawers you're going to see everything and hopefully it will kick me up the backside to start getting a lot of places more organized because they might look good but some of the cupboards and things like that we need to start utilizing for storage I'm not used to having this many cupboards I feel very very lucky to have so much storage because we literally had like the worst kind of storage in our old house and we had no kind of cabinets or cupboards so now we've got cabinets and cupboards galore 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 <laughs> just making up my own words there so i'm literally going to talk through every aspect of each of these rooms and talk to you about the inspiration and talk to you about why we chose to do the room in that way paints furniture, lessons learned, all of the nitty gritty about everything. So yeah, I hope that you are going to enjoy seeing lots of our hard work and everything that we've been working on in the last year that we have been in this house. Of course, I can't talk about my home account without telling you where you can find me. It is at Lydia Millen Home and I share the full journey. This is not about me. I am not the face of this channel. So if you're sick of the sight of me, you'll love this one. This is all just about furniture and styles and my learning because I didn't really know anything about interior design when we bought this house. And I learned a lot of hard lessons and I've also been making sure that I ob observe and absorb as much information from the people that have been working on this house so yeah and I find some little gems in there as well so hopefully you'll find some little things too so if you do want to come and find me it is at Lydia Millen home so without further ado I'm going to take you into the first of the rooms that were finished in this house so let's go so the first room that I'm going to be showing you around today is our dining room and one of our friends has affectionately named this the Russian room and it's kind of stuck. I'm going to insert some before footage, just very, very small before footage. I am a nightmare at capturing what our rooms looked like to begin with because I just don't like them so I don't photograph them or take pictures. So any pictures or videos that I have from when we looked around the house and what they looked like, I will insert now. So now let's have a look inside of my dining room or the Russian room as we like to call it. room that we started renovation of. So as you can see in this room we've gone for a mix of quite classic but also modern features. So we've got the classic panelling which I always knew I wanted in this room but then we've got the statement dining chairs and we've also got the Sputnik light which is in a brass finish and we've also got quite a lot of brass accents in this room which again makes it feel a little bit more modern. I didn't want this room to just be another grey room so this was my first step into experimenting with colour and I have just fallen in love with the colour blue for um, interiors. It's not a colour that I've worn much as um, in fashion sense but in my home I have loved experimenting with blue and I think it's one of my favourite colours. Because this house is quite light and airy it can really take some bold colours. So even though we didn't go all out in this room, it is just a touch, 
we really do feel like it has given this a little something special. So the first hurdles that we faced with this room were finding a dining table that first of all seated as many people as we wanted. I actually still think we could have gone a little bit bigger but this dining table comfortably seats six but you can also pretty comfortably seat eight as well. We've realised that this house is kind of made for entertaining about eight people at best that's when it's most comfortable but obviously we have some spare chairs for when people want to come and pull up a chair and we just have a few more people around this dining table is a copy of a bb italia dining table that i saw on one of my favorite instagram accounts i will link all of like the people referenced in the description box down below but if you don't follow brick by brick on instagram i saw her dining table and absolutely fell in love i knew i wanted a round dining table because it's a lot more social and just makes the, it more of a sort of um, sociable and friendly environment I think so round was always what I wanted to go for but it did take some time to realize that I was going to have to have one specially made and it did take a few months so we had the base of the dining table made separately and then it was fitted with the marble top and this is a Carrara marble which is absolutely beautiful but very soft and very porous so we've learned to respect the marble and basically you just can't spill anything on it <laughs> although we do have a really great product that gets rid of all of the um, marks and stuff so if you've got marble and you've got marks on it then you just need to look for some sif because that stuff gets everything out so it's not been too bad but we do respect the marble the paneling on the walls was something that I knew I wanted to do in this room and I love 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 the way it came out however I'm a bit kind of annoyed at myself that I didn't find a way to incorporate cornice in this room because there is an RSJ that goes along this side of the wall here I felt like it was just going to be too problematic I wish I'd looked for ways to overcome that because I think it would have finished this room off nicely maybe one day we can go for a little one that sort of creeps onto the ceiling but for the most part I do kind of regret that. I also regret not moving the speakers. It's really weird in this house we've noticed that a lot of the lights and ceiling designs are very 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 off centre and this room was no different and these speakers are completely off centre as you can see so it's very much over to the right. I wish we had just moved that speaker slightly and then put a really beautiful ornate ceiling rose in the center for the Sputnik light. This light was um, definitely a bold statement for me. If you followed me for a while, you'll know that this is quite out of my comfort zone, but I am actually so, so happy with how it's come out. And I think that it just makes this room a little bit more interesting. It's a real talking piece, but we didn't want it low. I know that I've had a few people say, oh, it should be lower, but we really didn't want anything obstructing uh, the sort of conversation of the table so for us it's a talking piece it's right there people notice it but it's just not directly in their face and we find that a lot better also one of the areas that we had a bit of problems with was the rug this room definitely needs a rug and finding a rug that is 300 by 300 because we knew we wanted square was really difficult and this was actually sourced by Jess and she's obviously an interior designer I'll link her down below she sourced this and the dining table and this is just we were looking for this for ages and I couldn't believe it when she actually found it because we were looking like we were going to have to get carpet and have it bound and it was just another long-winded process so when she found this it was expensive it was four figures but it was the most perfect sort of item and the shade of blue was perfect and it all just worked really really well in the space so I don't actually know where she got this from you do have to sort of speak to her and find out if she can source one for you as well pretty much. So those were the problems with the room but other than that it has become a space that I am just so in love with. It's tranquil yet um, inviting but also it feels quite glamorous but not in a stuffy sense. I didn't want it to feel as if people were going to come in here and worry about spilling stuff and worry about you know uh, ruining anything. It's still a relaxed and comfortable environment which I really like as well. So these chairs were a find from Amara Living and I, I honestly I can't believe how hard it was to find chairs that A didn't cost a million pounds but also felt really well made and I am so so impressed with these. Now they aren't the cheapest velvet chairs in the world but they also aren't the most expensive. What I wanted was the Gooby Beetle chairs. They are around about a thousand pounds each and for eight there was just no way that I was paying for that. So I found these on Amara Living. They're from Pulse Potten and I actually prefer them 
I like the way the velvet goes down the leg of the chair so I didn't have to worry about um, different metals, I didn't have to worry about different woods and they just worked really really well. So I think these are about two to three hundred pounds each and they were a bit of a splurge in this room for eight of them but I'm super happy and everyone always comments on them, they sit in them and they're just like oh my gosh they are so comfortable and so soft. So again a really big talking point in this room is these. The flowers in the centre of the dining table were actually in my dressing room. I now have my uh, faux wedding bouquet in there. So these were moved down here and I actually think that they suit this room perfectly. They give it a little bit of glamour in here. And also I just always think you need a little bit of foliage in each of the rooms. And I think this is, I think this is just from Ikea, you know. I think I picked this up in Ikea. I'm not too sure, but I love, love, love Ikea. We find so much stuff from there. Then moving on to the sideboard. Now the sideboard was a find that I made and I was really struggling with this room for a while to get it finished and also to get it full enough. I didn't want to pack out the room with loads of furniture. So as you can see on this side of the room, we don't have, we just kind of let the paneling do the talking and we haven't made too much of a fuss of this wall. And the same goes for the wall over here. We just let the panelling do the talking in here. But we still needed more furniture other than just the table because it was a little bit of a blank canvas in here. So we kind of wanted to make this into a bit of a feature wall. I actually started finding um, darker woods a lot more attractive, which was something I would never have gone for. I initially looked in Ikea and I found a unit, but it was out of stock. So I was just on the hunt for a very minimal contemporary style sideboard to go in this room. And I found this one on Wayfair. So it's very similar in price to the Ikea one but I actually prefer the front of this one although it is not a well-made piece of furniture and when I show you inside you'll see that it kind of some of the doors don't open very well but I am going to show you inside as well but on the top I've dressed it with some Ikea candles and a little bit of coral coral resin um, which is from Kelly Hoppen then I've got my NARS candle which smells just like Bora Bora these little bowls are from Dunelm they're a good little though I think they're like cereal bowls but they make such a great little decorative piece this is a, a Sarah Cope steak special she taught me about these bowls and then obviously we've got the Tom Ford iconic coffee table book that kind of finishes off rooms really really well so let's have a look inside the unit what have I got hiding in there so as promised I'm going to show you what's inside of this cabinet and as mentioned we haven't utilized this space and this storage very well at all um, but from what I can see, in here, we have a game of Monopoly. Whenever we have our friends over for dinner, we enjoy playing games and board games and things like that in here. So that's in that. But as you can see, this doesn't close unless I open this. It's so bizarre. Come on. Oh, no. In this drawer, we've got some placemats that we got from Costco. These just work really well to protect it. We've also got some blue napkins, which I like to put out to match the decor. We've got Mr. and Mrs., which can obviously live in here as well. <laughs> I'm having a little organized whilst I show you around. Uh, so that is that drawer. Can't get that to close. There we go. And in here, we have some more board games. In fact, we have a lot of board games. We've got Double, which is one of my favorites to play. We played that at New Year's. It was amazing. Um, I've also got Bananagrams, so more board games, and some Voil curtains that I'm yet to put up in here. So not much interesting stuff in there, but as promised, I'm gonna show you everything and show you all the nitty gritty of my house. This can go away. <laughs> Also up on this wall, we've got the artwork that we commissioned for this room. This is by an artist called Tony Thornton, and we wanted something that was going to really fill out these three um, panels and kind of frame them in their own right using the panels. We wanted something quite big and quite bold that tied all of the colours in the room in. So it's got the brass kind of tones through and then the blues and obviously the greys as well. And we love them. They really were quite a big splurge for us and I don't think that we could necessarily do that again in that 
capacity but in this room it really really needed some more colour and some more of the blue thread throughout and this was the perfect option. The wall lights are from Pookie Lights I think and they were a great find from Jess, Ali's brother's girlfriend and again they tie in with the Sputnik light really really nicely. So this is kind of like the feature wall in this room which I love. It's just, oh, I love it so much. In the corners of each of this wall we have some occasional chairs and these aren't really meant to be used but people have been known to perch if we've got too many people here for dinner. Usually it's me, I usually perch on here. Um, these were just more of a decorative finish, something to soften things up and the tones really, really complement this room so nicely. So we're very, very happy with them. Um, not, I think we've had a few comments on this room sometimes about people not understanding the chairs. For us, we really, really like it. We really like how much softer it feels having some soft furnishings in here. With the cushions and the chairs, it just feels less formal for me personally. We finished it off with some Sarah Coat Steak cushions. Um, these are actually temporary. We have some proper ones coming to fill out this room perfectly, but they're the sort of last cushions that we're waiting on, I think. So these are just some spares that we've got. Um, this is my favorite fabric. I absolutely love these cushions so, so much. And I actually love these chairs. These chairs are from Wayfair and they're about 200 pounds, a real sort of bargain chair and a great accent chair. I've got them in my office, we've got them in the living room and they just work really, really well. Hidden next to this occasional chair, I've got this vase. This was a gift for my 30th birthday from Ali's best friend, Neil, and his partner, Charlotte. And we decided that this was the perfect place to keep all of our corks. Kind of like a little memory cork jar. Obviously, I need to drink more wine, clearly, because we have not filled this in nearly a year. So I definitely need to put some effort into my wine drinking. But I just love this whole idea. Like when we're on trips and stuff like that, Carrie and I will keep the, the corks. Ali and I will keep the corks. If we have dinners, if we have parties, we keep all of the corks and they just go in there like that. And I just, I love it. It's a little bit of a keepsake, which I'm just such a sentimental person. So very, very happy with that. So. This is our bar cart and we got this from John Lewis but it's West Elm at John Lewis. Um, this is the last one that they had and it was, uh, so we got it like 10% off I think, just in store because it had been on display. Uh, so I think it was about two to three hundred pounds and on here we just keep a selection of glasses. These are my personal favourites that need a massive dust but we've got the cleaners coming today. These are our champagne sauces from John Lewis as well and we use those on New Year's and I love them. Then we've got some tumblers because Ali loves his whiskey and in here he's got one of his whiskies. I think he likes Woodford Reserve, I think that's what's in there. Then we've got some red wine that we've like had arrive, just got nowhere to put it. I need a nice wine rack for in here but I haven't actually found one yet so that's something that's still missing from this room. So we've just got some wine on there. We've also got this bottle of vodka, which belongs in this room basically. This is a vodka brand called uh, Marmont, and obviously this is the Russian room, and this is just such an interesting bottle of vodka that we decided to leave it in here, and it works perfectly. And then we've also got a bottle of Moet, which was our champagne from our wedding, so we keep that on display here. I've got some Dior coasters, which I rarely ever use, but love. These are kind of like a mother of pearl coaster. And then a little uh, reed diffuser. This is the Kerastase one that they have in their salons. Um, I absolutely love this. I don't think you can buy it, but I love it. So that's my little bar cart. And then the final thing to show you in this room is my curtains. Now, we never ever close the curtains in this room because it's not overlooked by anyone, so it doesn't really matter. So these are just kind of decorative curtains. We've obviously gone for really nice curtains elsewhere, and these are actually beautiful. These are only from Ikea though, but the color and the texture of them is so nice. And we've just keep them pleated back on these tie backs from John Lewis. These are also brass as well. And they just always stay open and swooshed like that. I don't know whether that's the technical term, but they are just swooshed back. And then they are on a brushed brass curtain pole as well. And they just stay all nicely uh, pleated back like this. They're so difficult to show you when they're by a window because they, it just makes the light go all funny. But that is um, our curtains and we're really happy with them. They kind of need to be taken up just slightly but whether we'll ever get around to that and whether it bother, bothers us enough, um, I'm not sure. This is just one of those things that you're like, 
does it really bother me that much? Not, not really. So am I going to like take them down, go and get them changed and then put them back up? I don't know. This is one of those things that I realize when it's like a lived in home, you just kind of, by the time you get them back, you might be wanting to replace them again, knowing me. So this is just something that really, really worked well for us. And actually quality wise, they feel amazing. I'm so, so happy with them. So that is the first of our room tours and the first addition to the Lydia Millen home series. I hope that you've enjoyed it. I've learned a lot. Filming in this room is very, very difficult. The light is so hard because it's just one big window that it's very, very difficult to capture the room as it is. But hopefully you've got an idea for the feel and the thought process behind this room. And I hope that you enjoyed having a look inside all of my drawers and cupboards and stuff like that but I also chose to film this more vlog style with some b-roll let me know what you think of that I've watched so many room tours and home tours and I tried to find like the best way to do this whether it was me in front of the camera with someone filming or what I'd love to know your feedback and whether you found it a little bit too kind of here there and everywhere or whether it worked really well because I just want to make it so that it's clear and easy for you to see what the room is like Anyway, other than that, I hope that you've enjoyed it and I hope that you're looking forward to the next instalment. I'll probably see you soon for another vlog, but thank you so much for watching. Bye.